Let me start just a uh, share the screen and um I will go from there because what we're going to do is um, firstly have a, a quick chat about podcasts. Um, but a little bit of background on me. Um, so I've been working in audio for about 30 years now. Um, yes, I, I am that old. Um, it uh, started for me with, um, you know, eight track tape recorders and um, cutting things up with razor blades to edit them and, and all this sort of stuff. The sort of joys that we just don't do anymore in, in in audio because everything's digital, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, I I started a uh, really getting further engaged with it when um music technology came along, um, and the start of uh, things like the schools having Atari ST computers in them, you know, and they had a, a keyboard that could link to the computer and you could record what you were playing and, and all sorts. And it was a brave new world, so it was. Um, and we've come such a long way. To, um, since then um, for example uh, this was to be my first album cover um, that that's me by the way um, so <laughs> so yes you can tell by the 90s um, you know sort of uh, wallpaper and, and, and things but that's my little Atari hiding in the corner there um, that I used to, to sit and, and me and my me and my mate used to sit and make bangers on it um, which was great but um you know, I, I I went off and had careers in, in sales and operations and all the rest of it and then decided I just can't be doing with the nine to five anymore. What you know, what I have this this music technology background, um and I worked for a lot of studio manufacturers and things, so I knew all about the technology. What can I be doing that can give myself a career in, in audio sort of thing? And I think the thing I love about audio is that there are so many facets to it. So I formed the the uh, an agency, if you like, called Audio Outsource. Um, and over the past couple of years, our principal income has been through podcasts. Because as Maureen was saying, the the growth in podcasts has just been exponential. Um, partly because of lockdown and things, um, I do a lot of business podcasts for people because it is a, a fabulous way for businesses to get their message out there and get people uh, realizing what their sort of tone of voice is and how they would approach different um, you know, uh, problems and, and jobs and how they do the, the jobs that they do and, and what their thoughts are on things. And it means that when someone is looking for a business um, to do a particular job for them, if they've if they've heard that these people have got podcasts and you know they hear how much of an authority they are on subjects and things, then um, it's building a real relationship with the customer before they even start to 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 need that service. But of course, the it, it started even further back than that with just pure enthusiasm. So if you want to tell everybody everything you know about golf or Star Wars or tennis or, or skiing or, or anything, um, you know, fishing, you know, all these sorts of things have massive followings for podcasts. Um, and uh, I'll take you through a, a, a little bit of the sort of the what and the why and, and things. But um, but yeah, it's a huge growth market and it's um, to, to produce a good one creates, you know, it, it needs a, a, a really a little bit of skill in, in terms of audio because you're creating something to broadcast to people. And as with anything, whether it's film or photography or, or audio or radio or TV or anything, the quality of what you broadcast, um, both in content and in visual and auditory appearance, is what keeps people coming back for it. If you have lots of noise and things on your podcast, then yeah, that distracts people and, and they, they don't want to listen to something like that. So we'll go through a, a few of those bits and pieces. Um, so, yes, let's kick off with um, what is a podcast, why on earth would you do it, and then we'll get into the fun bits of actually how do you do it. Um, so, um, have we come today with any particular questions that we think we might need to answer? Because there'll be quite a lot that I will go through, but um, if you already have something in your head that you think, oh, actually, I really hope I find out about X, Y, or Z when we do this. Um, now's the time to shout out so that I can make a note of it and make sure that I cover it in, in the presentation. So, seeing as you've all refused to put your cameras on, um, does anybody want to put their mic on and say anything that, that they um, desperately want to find out? Or are we just going to batter through it and, uh, and hopefully answer any questions? 
Well, I unmuted myself, so I'll start. But um, <laughs> first of all, I just wanted to bounce off what you just said that um, it was, I think, one of my first lessons in film school that people will watch something that is not, that doesn't look amazing, but sounds great, but they will not sit and watch something that they can't hear, even if it looks amazing. So sound is actually crucial. And as you say, the fact that it sounds clear and good, that there's no nothing to sort of take your attention away from anything, that's crucial. Um, and I also wanted to ask you, so when you say about um, making you know uh, podcasts for business people or you know for businesses sorry um what do you mean so do people what, what's your business model like do people come to you and you you know they they say okay this is um the content that we'd like to showcase and and do you actually just do the podcast for them or do you teach them how to make the podcast so it depends on the size of the business really so i i have um two particular clients who are huge global um, you know, players in the mobile advertising industry and uh, user acquisition. So they have massive marketing departments who decide, you know, um, what content they're going to put in it, what guests they want to get on, what they're trying to address and all the rest of it. And I basically do all the production for them. So they do their interviews, they send them to me, I will clean them up, put the interviews together, make them, you know, completely coherent, um, and put the music on it and so on and so forth and then publish it for them whereas um, the smaller businesses the one person or two people businesses that I work with um, it's far more about a partnership thing where I'll be talking to them um, also about what kind of content they want to put out how best to approach um, a particular subject you know, so if they want to let people know that they're the authority on candle making, for example, here's a, a client that I have who's a candle maker. Um, it's that can be something difficult to get across in a podcast because that's a physical thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, is is candle making. So how do you how do you do that in a podcast? Well, she talks to lots of other business people about um not the, necessarily the process of candle making, but the process of turning that into a business on the side. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it could, in essence, be just about any um, product that she's making, but um, her audience comes to her for hearing about um, how she copes with that as a business and how she built that as a business and how maybe to replicate that model um, you know whether it is still candle making that they do or whether it... so yeah I get far more involved with those types of clients about the type of content they want to put out um, and the strategy that we'll use to to build the audience for the the podcast where we'll put it um, you know where we're going to distribute it whether we're going to have its own separate social media pages and so on and so forth so a, a little bit of everything for the smaller businesses um, but the easier jobs for me funnily enough are the, the, the main Major clients because they simply want the best quality they can get so they create the content and just send it to me and as, as long as I make it absolutely sparkly then they're they're quite happy they don't need me to get involved in anything else mm -hmm. um, but yeah it's it's nice to have a little bit of involvement in them um, in the marketing side as well you know mm. so maybe that's something that you'll cover later you and Patterson just asked I would like yeah. to start balancing out audio levels to make them sound more crisp yeah, that's definitely something that, that we'll cover, but it, it's great that we've got a note of that now, Ewan, because um, there are certain things, depending on how complex we get, um, there are certain things that, that I, I might have missed out or forgotten about um, sort of thing. So good to have a reminder of that because we, we will, once we've recorded something for the podcast, we'll have a look at how we might um, balance two different tracks out or how we make even a single track um, completely balanced. Because... When you're recording something, and especially if you're recording a guest, you might uh, you you have very little control over where they are um, in in relation to their microphone and where they are in terms of the environment. So they they might occasionally go and, and talk over here, which is vastly different to them being you know in front of the microphone. Um, so yes, good good question, and we'll make a note of that to make sure that, that we cover that. 
Um, but if that's it, let's just crack on and, and rattle through it because we want to get to the point where we can actually start to record something and, and show you about these these tricks. So, um, what on earth is a podcast? Well, if if you don't listen to podcasts and you don't really know what the theory behind podcasts is, um, then a, a, a quick note for that. Um, essentially, it is your own broadcast or radio show. Um, there are no hard and fast rules about um, making a podcast. You can decide the length and the content, whether you have guests, whether you have full round table um, discussions, any of this stuff is, is absolutely up to you. Um, it's usually a, a, an episodic content or serialized content where wherein um even if it's a different interview every week you tend to be talking about a similar subject or, or the same themes running through it um and your that means that you, your listeners subscribe to it um usually you know spotify itunes google podcasts amazon all these places and then they get notified every time you upload a new um a new episode uh, because you may not upload it at exactly the same time every week or every day or whatever it is like a radio show would be on at three o'clock you know so, uh, so they get notified every time that you put something up and if they're if they're using their phone to listen to it for example then um it will automatically be downloaded to their phone for them to listen to whenever they want um so it's a it's a a, a truly sort of um pushed to the listener a uh, medium that makes sure that, that people that you can get to subscribe to your your channel um will always be notified and and they'll always get the opportunity to engage without you having to do further marketing pushes to them to get them to listen to it um but it's not just made up of sort of audio content so to make a successful podcast yes you have to have all the audio content because that's what people are listening to but there is a background to it as well which is the cover artwork and the show notes so show notes are where you put the description in of everything that, that you might be talking about on that episode or what your um, episode is about um, or what guests you have on and maybe their contacts or maybe you've spoken about a, a, a book or a website or a competition or something like that so you can put the links into the show notes and the show notes tend to be the thing that people look at after they've listened to the podcast so you don't have to give a full rundown of, of what was on the podcast because they've, they've usually already listened to it by then um, but a brief introduction to the episode uh, and then you know they'll go looking for links to something so if you're in your podcast and you're saying oh i'll put a link to that in the show notes that's where people will go and they can then click on the links to go and find information about the guest or the book or the website or the film or whatever it is that, that, that you've been talking about so it's important to have some you know engaging information in the show notes um because it's your chance to kind of push the audience a little bit further past what you've just said um, you know, it keeps them engaged that little bit more, um, which is more important, I suppose, for business podcasts. But it's important for anybody who who wants to grow an audience for something. Um, you know, it's the reason why we have uh, you know trailers for movies, but then we have all the reviews, um, and then we have the review shows, and then we have websites and YouTube channels dedicated to the reviews because you know the 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 movies. Um, studios want to keep people engaged and, and keep spreading the message so that's exactly what you're doing with your show notes sort of thing and cover artwork is the other thing that's that's quite important um i tend to change cover artwork for every episode but only a little bit because you want consistency um but you might want to so in this example you know i've just popped the guy's headshot there and um and, and what his name is you know and, and why i'm talking to him sort of thing so that will be the only thing that changes about my cover artwork for every episode that i've done um so you get the consistency of of recognizing the the picture as you're scrolling through a, a podcast app um but you get the information for, for each episode that you have so yeah you have to, to sort of think about what you're going to do with your your um artwork and your show notes um and uh yeah, that's that's as I say, that's where you get to, to sort of um, you know reach out that little bit more and, and try and keep people engaged a bit further. Um, so that's a brief visit on what on earth a podcast is. Um, but why would you want to podcast? Well, we've probably touched on a fair bit of that already. Um, you know, but but I when I 
speak to clients about making a podcast, I take them through a whole series of questions just because it makes it easier for them to produce the content in the end of the day. Um, so you could apply this to um, any job that you're doing with anyone within a creative field. So, you know, photography or filmmaking or anything. Um, somebody wants you to do something for them. Okay, well, well, why, why is it we're doing this? So why are we doing the podcast? Is it to be seen as the authority of something? Is it just for kudos and, and, and point scoring? Is it to drive people to a certain cause, whether that be a charity or, a, or um, you know, a business or anything like that? Um, you know, have a real definition of why you want to do it and that will give you a better idea of what content you need to put in. Um, and that's kind of linked quite closely to the what do you want to achieve out of it, you know, and, and that again is a bit like, well, do you want just people to think that you are the 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 know all for that subject, or do you want to um, raise funds for a charity, or raise awareness for something, or do you want people to um, just come with you on a journey that that you're doing, um, whether that be or oh, anything from you know popular topics nowadays like mental health, um, you know, right through to just your enthusiasm for a particular TV show or or anything, absolutely anything like that. Um, but having those ideas will, will help you, you know, push towards making better content for it. Um, who's the target audience for your podcast? That's more about um, how you're going to speak to them. Is your is your target audience for your super nerdy podcast um, super nerds? Because if it is, you can talk to them in whatever um, you know uh, acronyms and and so on that they will understand. You know they'll be on that same path as you are, knowing all the the ways that you want to talk. But if your audience is um, you trying to get people involved in something, you might have to simplify the language a bit more, not use so many acronyms, not refer to things that you think people will just know what it is you're, you're talking about. Um, you know, so that, that's the, there is a consideration there for, for who's the target audience, so how do you talk to them, how do you make sure that you're giving them something they will engage with sort of thing. Um, the format that it'll take uh, is quite important because you'll need to plan if you're going to have guests um, and interviews and so on and so forth. It's all perfectly feasible over the internet now. Um, there's a couple of different sites. I, w I wouldn't advocate using Zoom to do it. Um, a Zoom recording suffers from whatever internet breakdown there is, you know, during the 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 um, the recording. You know, so any interference, um, broadband noise, that sort of thing, will be picked up in the recording. Whereas there are other sites that you can use to do it remotely um, that will will give you a much better result. Um, but yeah, you have to plan a little bit for that. Um, and probably one of the, the most important questions now is how often do you intend to do it? Um, and this harks back to um, a, what Maury said right at the start um, about consistency. So I said um, there are no hard and fast rules about um, how long your podcast is, how often you want to do it, all that sort of thing. And that's absolutely true. You know, you decide what you can do, but try to make that decision based on the consistency of commitment that you can give to it. If you want to talk for an hour, um, do you intend to do that every week? Because if you do, that's a good couple of hours, few hours maybe even, out of your week to be able to produce that every week. Um, plus, you're asking your listeners to dedicate an hour every week to listen to you. Um, and so there tends to be a bit of a correlation between how often you podcast and how long your podcast is. And it, it varies by subject sort of thing. But um, it's perfectly fine to do an hours long podcast if that's what you want to do. I listen to podcasts about sound design for video games and um, you know films and, and so on. And, so on. and they're easily an hour long, but they only come out every month. Um, and that's absolutely fine because people know that it only comes out a month, but they've got an hour in a month to dedicate to listen to it. Um, I would never manage to listen to them, uh, you know, if they were an hour every week. Uh, and I don't know that the people that make them would manage to commit to that, uh, making it every week. So, yeah, there's a correlation between if you're doing a 10, 15 minute podcast, maybe you can do that every week. That would be great. You can do it every fortnight. You can do it every three weeks. You can do it every day if you really want to. Um, it, it really doesn't matter as long as you can keep the consistency of, of of producing it because the the last thing you want to do is be 
um, kicking off with an hour-long podcast every week and you get four or five weeks into it and, and you have to take a break for a week because, you know, the world falls down around us on a regular basis and, and you end up having to change plans and so on and so forth. Um, but your listeners are looking for your podcast every week now because you've already been doing it for four or five weeks. So if you miss out a week, suddenly there's there's discourse there, and and um, and you know, um, I'm not saying you can't take a break because it's perfectly fine to say to to people on your podcast, say, look, uh, we're not going to be around for the next couple of weeks. We've got X, Y, and Z to do. Um, so you know, join us again in three weeks' time uh, for a special episode doing such and such. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Signpost things to your listeners all the time. Um, tell them what's coming up. Tell them you're taking a break. Tell them next week's going to be a shorter episode or a longer episode. You know, give yourself the flexibility to, to run your own podcast. That's absolutely fine. But make sure you, you signpost it to people um, because they will. You, your listeners will always look for the consistency of both how often you podcast and how long your podcast is. Um, because you you don't want to do a 15 minute podcast every week and then somebody sits down to listen to it next week and it's an hour long uh, and it's suddenly oh I wasn't expecting that I don't know if I've got an hour right now to sit and listen to that so by all means tell people hey listen next week's episode is going to be a special hour long because we've got two guests on and we're going to talk about x y and z um but yes try and try and keep your consistency right so that your listeners know what to expect um and um as to you know the the, the big reasons of why you would do it um, the, the, there are no wrong reasons i mean you you could just be wanting to do entertainment or education or exposure or or anything like that um you know and there are different reasons depending on whether you're a business podcast and a leisure podcast but a business podcast will set tend to set yourself goals and say, right, I'm doing this because I want to drive footfall into the business, get get my name out there and get people knowing what I do so that when they need that service, they know I'm, I'm the one to come to. And then you have to gear your content all around that. And then you'll tend to measure it and see how many listeners you're getting versus how many maybe website hits you're, you're getting now versus how many actual contact requests you're getting and so on and so forth. Um, leisure podcasts, you know, if you just want to evangelize about your favorite subject, um, who, you know, initially, certainly, who cares how many people are listening to it? You're, you're getting your voice out there and, and you're, you're getting yourself heard. Um, and you can do as much or as little as you like to, to build that um in terms of you know social media and things and promoting it or you can just sit there and let it grow organically because you're doing it for yourself not necessarily for anyone else um so yes I, that pretty much covers the the sort of why you would want to do it um so are we are we ready just to move on to the how on earth do you actually do this and and we'll see if we can put together a little uh, live broadcast um or uh, you know if, if you have any questions or anything that's popped up so far stick it in the chat seeing as nobody seems to have brought their microphone with them today um <laughs> never mind their webcam <laughs> um, uh, and and we'll get we'll get moving yeah um okay so i always split um how you make a podcast into three simple little uh, sections which is you record it you edit it and then you publish it and that's it and if you concentrate on one of those at a time then you find yourself getting through it quite quickly um so lots of things that we could talk about in terms of what you need to be able to record it and things but the bottom line is a computer and a usb microphone is is pretty much your starting point for anything um one of the things you want to consider, though, when you're recording is what environment you're recording in. Um, so you'll notice behind me the, the sort of acoustic panels and things, which are there more to um, stop the reflections of the audio bouncing around and making this sound like it's a, a, a big room. Um, <clears throat> they're not so much there for soundproofing. Um, this room is, is fairly quiet as it is anyway. Um, it's well away from any traffic or anything like that. Um, so I really just need to worry about you know how much noise bounces around so that it doesn't sound like I'm in a cave. Um, so that's one of the things that, that is key because if it sounds like you're in a big room somewhere, it tends to detach your listeners from the sort of 
well, I hesitate to say intimacy, but the the, the personalization of of listening to a podcast. Um, a lot of people tend to listen to them on their earbuds from their phone while they're doing something or walking down the road. And if you imagine that you're you're actually in somebody's ears talking to them, if you then sound like you're you're in a a massive you know cared hall or, or something, then yeah, it's uh, it, it becomes um, slightly distracting. Um, so how can you create that at home? Well, one of the best ways to do it is to try and record in a room that has plenty of soft furnishings. Um, so living room and bedroom tend to be the, the best places to do that sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, um, anything that's that's not a, a completely square, empty box, and it will start to, to cut down. Um, so bedrooms are pretty good because you've got, you know, the, the, the sheets or the duvet or whatever on the bed that's quite soft and stops the, the, the sound from bouncing around. Curtains tend to have slightly heavier curtains, um, and so you can close the curtains and the sound won't reflect off the curtains and come straight back to you and things. Um, and one of the best things you can do actually is sit with your back to a closed pair of curtains or hang the duvet over a, a clothes rail or something and sit with your back to that because the majority of reflective noises and the stuff you don't want coming into the microphone tends to come from behind you mainly because of the way most microphones are built they tend to be um you know front firing so whether whether they're on their side or whether they're like this one on the front um so whatever goes out in front of you and comes back um doesn't enter the microphone quite as much as the stuff from behind you so if you sit with your back to a pair of curtains or as i say a, a um a duvet that's hung over something um, then you you'll find that the sound is is deadened quite uh, quite well um yeah the last place you want to be doing anything is sort of kitchen bathroom hallway um you know a, a spare room that's fairly empty anything like that will sound like you're in a, a bigger room um so yeah that's the sort of thing that you you can do without an awful lot of investment to to make things sound better um as i say a a, a usb mic um into a laptop or something uh tends to to do the job pretty well and therefore you don't really have to spend an awful lot to to get it sounding pretty good you could do it just with the the microphone on your phone or uh, the microphone on your laptop or your headphones that have um you know a mic built into them whether they're airpods or whether they're actual wired headphones that have a mic on them because those microphones are quite close to you if you're in a fairly quiet room that can make for quite a reasonable sound as well um, but I would look to to upgrade to a separate microphone into your into your laptop or something as as quickly as you can. You know, um, start somewhere around the seventy or eighty pound mark with with microphones. Don't buy the cheapy twenty pound Amazon microphones that that promise the world because they're just as noisy as having your laptop sitting there and picking up all all the rest of the noise. So, uh, edit. Well, I think we'll touch a bit more on edit by the time we've actually got something to edit um, and then publishing um, I can tell you a little bit about publishing right now in that um, it is not a particularly complicated process um, there are two of my favorite sites um, that I use for publishing um, podcasts uh, Anchor which is a free site um, you, it has a paid subscription as well, but it's, essentially you can use the free site version of that. Um, it is owned by Spotify, so anything that you put on Anchor will immediately appear on Spotify automatically. And then within a couple of days, um, you can tell it that you want it to appear on Apple and Google and Spotify and all the rest of it. You can, you can do that manually if you like, but it will do it automatically for you. It'll just take a few days to filter through and get that done. Um, and the best paid for subscription model that I've um, found so far is uh, Buzzsprout, um, which is another popular podcast hosting site. But they all work in the same way. So you make your podcast, you upload it to the podcasting distribution site, um, and you add your artwork and you add your show notes. You tell it when you want it to publish and that's it. It'll then start to filter that out to a lot of other um, podcast hosting sites so that you can then go ahead and tell your audience um, it's available on Apple, it's available on Google, it's available on Spotify. Here's the links. Go listen, subscribe to wherever your favourite podcasting host is. Um, 
And that's as complicated as it needs to get. Um, by all means, you can build a web page um, on the side of that to just promote your podcast and have it hosted on there as well. Um, you can create your own social media channels, you know, so you can have your own Twitter feed for your podcast, your own Facebook page, your own LinkedIn page if it's a, a more business oriented thing. Um, doesn't work quite so well on Instagram, but you know, there's nothing stopping you having an Instagram page for it. Um, but the only thing you have to be cautious of uh, when uh, promoting on the social media sites is that um, most of them won't allow you just to upload an audio clip. Um, so one of the good, good, great ways to, to promote your podcast is to take a, maybe a 30 second clip of it and, and send it out there for people to listen to. Um, you would have to do that via um, video rather than audio because things like Facebook and Twitter and things, they don't like you uh, just uploading audio, although Facebook are starting a, a, a podcasting uh, page, so that's going to change in the near future. Um, so you might want to use something like, um, I use a, a, a website called Headliner, um, which allows you to quickly put uh, any picture and run your audio alongside it and even have a little waveform running along the bottom of the screen um, to show you that there's there's actual sound happening there. Um, so do that, you know, get your, 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 your um, cover artwork, put it on um, and then uh, have your... Um, have your audio running alongside it and use that as a, as a little trailer to promote your, your podcast sort of thing. Um, but yeah, in its simplest form, just use something like Anchor to upload your podcast, your show notes and your artwork, and then that's it, starting to get distributed to the world. So it doesn't have to be a complicated process, um, but let's move on then from record... Well, there's, there's some of the... Um, the distribution sites um, that I'll use. So Anchor, as I said, is, is the, the main free one that I would use. Um, uh, you know, other ones of note that are not in there are things like Acast and Google. Amazon now allow you to upload your podcast, um, so it'll be part of Audible and Amazon Music, um, you know, which is, uh, which is an, a, another audience for you to, to, um, to address. Uh, okay, I'm going to... Bring up. Okay, so you should you should still be able to see my screen with um, what is now my um, DAW, my DAW, for anybody that's not um, familiar with that. So a uh, digital audio workstation um, is something that allows you to record multiple tracks of audio um, and edit them up and, and do whatever you want with them um, and then bounce them all down into a single audio file, which is exactly what we want to be able to make a podcast. Um, so uh, this is the, 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 this is the one I use mainly because it does um, it does video, it does audio, it does everything I, I need it to as as my job. And this is Reaper. Um, so you might be familiar with things like I don't know um, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe or, um, Premiere Pro for video work, and they'll do a bit of audio work as well. So it's possible to do it in them. Uh, Pro Tools um, is is the kind of industry standard audio tool. Um, but they all work in very much the same way. They are they are all digital audio workstations. They all will um, allow you to have multiple tracks of audio and and edit them up and and so on and so forth. So I will show you um, in what I'm doing here. So you can tell with um, with this right now that we've got my signal from my microphone, which I'm actually just going to turn down a little bit. Um, so that it doesn't clip every time I, I speak. Um, and what I would tend to do to, to start making a podcast is to make an introduction and an outro. <clears throat> and these will bookmark your podcast. Um, so every time someone um, listens to your podcast, they get the same introduction. Just a fairly generic welcome to my podcast all about podcasting. Um, and then they get the same outro as well that says, hey, thanks for listening to my podcast today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you haven't subscribed already, you'll find us on Apple, Google, Amazon and all good podcast sites. Um, you know, please subscribe. Join us next time. Um, and that way we, we have a template for our podcast. So we have our, our front end and our back end. And what we're doing every time we make an episode is, is slotting something in the middle, which is the actual content that you're going to create. Um, 
So let's go ahead and I'm just going to record a quick introduction um, on here. Uh, I'll maybe even make um, the odd mistake, um, intentionally, obviously, um, so that we can correct some of that uh, and I'll show you how easy it is to manipulate audio. Um, and as I say, this this works in any of the, the workstations that you might be able to use yourself. Um, there is a, a, a pretty good free audio workstation called Audacity, which people might already be familiar with because it's, it, it's such a popular product. Um, <clears throat> it will allow you to do some of this as well. I don't um, personally use it an awful lot because it's not as powerful as I need it to be. But for, for starting off to make a podcast, that would be fine. And again, because that's free, there's no investment um, put into that. Right, let's stop waffling about doing it and just actually do it. So if I hit record, I'm going to wait for my time to reach zero. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. <coughs> Thanks for joining me. Now, um, I didn't know I was actually going to cough, but that's... <laughs> I know it probably looked like a deliberate mistake, but um, I'm going to play this back and let me know... You should be able to hear it the way my system's rigged up, but let me know if you don't hear anything. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. <coughs> Thanks for joining me. Okay, so Maureen, did, did we get a nod there? Did you hear... Yeah, no, that's perfect. Good, uh, good, uh, great. Um, yeah, my, my system is set up that um, in, anything I record or play back or say it should all feed into Zoom, but I, I, I'm always nervous that you can't hear what on earth I'm doing. Okay, so, I mean, that's that's absolutely fine for an introduction. I'm quite happy with that. I will edit it and, and we'll change it up a bit. Um, let's do another one for the, the outro. Um, so I'm just going to create another track. Uh, I'm going to mute that one so that I can start recording on this one. And if I choose the correct input, there we go. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. We are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and all good podcasting apps. See you next time. So, you know, it's all fairly generic because what you're trying to do is create a template that you can then alter your your content in between. Um, so let's just see if that's okay. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. So let's take this one track at a time. Um, and I'm just going to open this up a little bit more so that you can see... Uh, let's get rid of the grids. Um, so let me play this one back because I'm I'm looking at this audio and I'm already thinking, okay, that looks to me like I've taken a big breath, and I don't really want everybody to hear that that I've taken a big breath. Um, and then I know that there's a cough in here somewhere, so I'm going to want to take that out as well. <clears throat> so let's see if I'm right. Hi and well. Yeah, so there's a great big breath at the start of that. Um, the majority of audio workstations will work exactly the same um, as Reaper in that when I hover over the end of my audio file, it turns into a little bookmark sign. And I can grab that with the mouse and just drag it to cut off any audio that, that I don't want. <clears throat> and it's quite important to get rid of some of the major breaths because generally when we're having a conversation with someone or when you're listening to someone talking, you, you don't tend to notice the breaths because you know, you're in amongst a conversation or you're listening to a lecture or something like that. However, when you're in someone's ears on a podcast, um, bigger breaths and things will become distracting. Don't remove absolutely everything because then it becomes completely unnatural. Um, but, but anything that is a... <sighs> Hi and welcome. To become something that you know just hurts to to keep listening to. So let's see if I if I've chopped off the right bit for this. Hi and welcome to the podcasters podcast. Great. So so I've got rid of the breath at the start. Um, I've I've clipped the signal a little bit there that that hopefully you can hear. Hi and welcome. You hear that little rattle. Um, means that I've I've I haven't turned the microphone down enough. 
Um, and so the, the signal is clipping a little bit, which is giving us a little bit of distortion. So we'll tackle that in a minute. Let's deal more with um, the bits we want it to miss out. So let's let's play it through again and I'll mark somewhere that we need to take out. Hi and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. <coughs> Thanks for joining me. Right, okay, so I have a little breath in here which I think I need to take out as well. All about podcasting. I'm your... Yeah. So, as with uh, all of the DAWs, you can cut an audio file. Um, so in, in Reaper, I just use the split tool that cuts the audio file into two pieces. And that way, I can use the, the bookmarks again just to tidy up the edges of this file and say, Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. <coughs> Thanks for joining. Right, so our next challenge is to get rid of that cough. Well, again, I'm just going to use the same process. Um, you know, this is this is sort of really basic level editing that you can get into quite quickly that will dramatically improve um, the, 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 the quality of what people are listening to. So I'm going to split the file round about here somewhere, and then we'll have a listen to, to see whether I've... I've um, cut off the, the breath that, that I took for coughing properly. Um, but this is all coughing here, so I'm going to get rid of all of this. And then this is the big breath that I took before I said the next piece. So I'm pretty sure that this end section will be absolutely fine, um, especially if I get rid of the end bit of it. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, but I'm not sure yet about this section here, whether I've cut off enough at the end of the, 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 the piece. So let's have a listen. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. There's still an, a, a small noise at the end of that. So let's, that means I want to bring that in a little bit further. And another tool that is available um, on all of the, the audio workstations is the ability to fade in or fade out um, the audio that you've recorded. So I do that on Reaper just by moving up to the top corner and I can drag a fade in or a fade out and you can actually you can see the waveform shrinking or getting bigger. So just to make sure that I'm not stopping dead um, and that's not creating another little noise, I'm just going to fade that ever so slightly. So that should be quite pleasing now. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. Yeah. Okay, but now I've got this great big gap. I'm just going to put a little fade on these ones as well. Now I've got this great big gap here, but because we have essentially now separate audio files, I can drag these around to wherever I like. So I can make this um, whole passage in, into one sort of coherent sentence um, instead of having it broken up where I took the, the breaths and things. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. Thanks for joining me. So I'm going to just close the gap on that a little bit. You can play with it to your heart's Hi, content. Hi, and welcome you know. to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. Thanks for joining me. And that'll do as, as my introduction. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'll, I'll edit uh, the clipping that's going on here um, and I'll show you another sort of industry standard tool that we use for that is, um, I don't know if anybody's heard of Isotope RX. I'm sure you have if you're at all into to audio editing or anything. Um, but I use uh, RX9, which um, is a complete suite of audio editing tools and one of the super quick fixes that it's got on it is just a declipping tool. Um, so I'm going to export my little bit of audio um, into RX uh, and it's going to show up here and I'm going to drag this onto this screen. Okay, so you should now be able to see RX9 with the blue waveforms and, and so on, yeah? Um, so let's listen to it in here. So if I hit record, I'm going to wait for my time to reach zero. Hi, and welcome to the... P so there's there's the bit there. Uh, of course, this is the full audio um, uh, piece that, that I'm listening to. I, I should explain that what I did in Reaper 
um, although I, I created all these edits and, and, and so on and so forth, um, it's not affecting the original file that is on the computer. Um, so it's called non-destructive editing. And what it's doing is um, it is accessing the file in different places and playing it back to me the way I want to hear it. But it's not affecting the full original file that I created, which means if I do something that actually I think halfway down the line, I'm not happy with that, I can always return to the original file and start to edit again. Excuse me. And that's why um, RX has still got the entire um, file that's on here. However, that really doesn't make any difference because all I'm going to do is treat what I want to treat in RX. And when I save that, it will be back into to Reaper the way I want it to be. So I'm going to select the whole file and I'm going to do this D-clip and it's going to tell me where my, my uh, sort of spectrogram is on there. And I'm going to suggest where I want to declip it and it's going to do all this automatically for me the fantastic tool that saves hours of me going through things with a spectral editor and, and, and making sure I can get rid of everything um, we'll render that and when we play that back we should hear a lot less if not um, completely eliminated the, the clipping hi and welcome to the podcast there we are so I, I'm not sure how well that's coming across to you but um, if I save this and go back to Reaper, the little rattling, the little distorted rattling that was happening when I said hi because I was uh, I was overclipping the mic um, has now been fixed. Hi and welcome to the podcasters pod. Hi and welcome to the pod. I don't know how well that that's coming across to you, but um, if if you noticed the distortion at all the first time, then you'll notice that it's away this time. Um, you don't need all of these tools to be able to do it. I, I'm simply giving you an example of, of the power of what we can do now to make the quality of audio for podcasting or broadcast or anything. Um, there are so many functions in, in post-production that we can use that um, just make what you hear as an end result um, you know, fantastic. Uh, it's, it's much like all the, the trickery that goes on in film um, sort of thing in terms of... Um, you know, VFX and so on and so forth. So, um, that's us got our introduction. Uh, we could go ahead and, and do all the same with the outro if we want. Um, and uh, I could edit that up. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Podcasters Podcast. But I'm going to skip over that just for a second because I'm conscious that it's already sort of 10 to 10, uh, 10 to 11. Um, and I want to just show you uh, how I would you know, move on from there. So if I've got the introduction for the podcast um, done and I'm happy with it the way it is, uh, I'm then going to want to add a little bit of music to it. Um, because it's always better to have a little bit of music for your introduction and a little bit of music for your outro. You might even drop bits of music in between sections of your podcast just to break it up sort of thing. Um, but I was having a look earlier for some music that I've done recently. Um, uh, this one, so this is just an audio file that I'm going to drag into Reaper and then we're going to cut that to the length we want it and balance that out between... Um, uh, between the, the voice and the things. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is actually add a little bit of compression to the intro voice, which is um, where Ewan's question comes into balancing out audio um, and making it sound more crisp. Uh, so let me first of all drag this audio file in. Um, so we have a little bit of music now. I'm going to let you hear what that is. So, just a fairly generic little, you know, ditty to, to, to go under your podcast intro. Um, but I'm going to start the voice a bit further on, because I want the, the intro of the music to start, and then, you know, see where we want to put the, um, the vocals. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. Thanks for joining me. So, the music is obviously getting a little bit loud by the time we're actually talking there, so I'm going to bring that down in terms of volume. 
I'm going to want to shorten it completely. So again, I'm just using my bookmark. You know, I'm grabbing the end of the audio and I'm running it right down to about here. And then I'm going to do the, let me open it up a little bit in case you can't see that. And then I'm going to do my little fade out on it as well. Uh, and let's see if that's quiet enough. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast, all about podcasting. I'm your host, Kerr Matheson. Thanks for joining me. And, and at this point, so, so once it's faded out, thanks for joining me. That's about the time where I would start the actual content. So um, I would then start having the, the, the interview or whatever it was. Um, you know, If it was my podcast, that's the point at which I would be starting to speak and say, hey, welcome back. Um, thanks. Uh, this week we've got um, Holly Thompson on to talk to us about um, why she never puts her camera on and, and she's ever so shy that she never puts her microphone on. Sorry, Holly, I don't know why I picked on you. Well, I do. It's because you're at the top of the screen right under me, so for, for me. But, <laughs> um, but you get the gist. That's the point at which I would start to talk about, you know, hey, the specifics of this week's episode. Um, and then we would round it off and we would do exactly the same for the outro. We would treat the vocals however we needed to in terms of um, reducing any clipping or anything, taking out any breaths, making the spacing right, um, and then putting the music under it. Um, and it's much the same when you come to edit the content, the entire content of your interview. Um, you'll want to make sure that um, you remove any you know, massive breaths or big pauses tend to be the the, the, the killer. Um, you know, especially if you're interviewing someone, th quite often you want to take a moment to think about the answer. You know, they'll want to take a moment to think about their answer. But you'll also maybe want to take a moment to think about um, your response to that answer and leading into the next question and so on and so on. Uh, and when you listen to it back, it can be quite unnatural because you've got this pause both of you know your thinking time but also maybe whatever um, connection time is going on um so you want to you know you'll want to chop that up and move those pieces around as well so that you can bring um conversations closer together and it flows a lot better at that point um da, 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 da. so yes yeah, so we would do the same with the outro then we would treat the content um the one thing that i always do which relates to ewan's um question is <clears throat> A, start to balance out the, the two guests, but um, also uh, putting a little bit of compression on the vocal to, helps to balance out the entire vocal sound, but also gives you a, a, a more um, consistent level of sound, which if you do that to both your guests, for example, you'll have a much easier time then balancing the volume between them. Um, so let me show you what, what I mean by that. Um, compression, and I'm just going to use one of the stock compressors um, that comes with a, with Reaper. Uh, da, 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 where is it? Uh, so compression is about um, squeezing dynamics. So if you think that um, a vocal range has a dynamic range from, from very, 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 very soft very soft, right up to, you know, really, which I won't scream down the microphone, but very, very loud. Um, to get that consistent for a listener, you want the quiet sounds to, to sound at almost the same volume. And we're talking about d dynamic range volume here, not... Um, uh, not physical volume, if, if you know what I mean. So a whisper should still sound like someone is whispering in the microphone. But if they really are whispering at the same time as they're, they're shouting, then you'll, you'll, one of them will be far too loud and the other one will be far too quiet and you'll not make it out what they're saying. So compression squeezes the dynamic range um, to make the volume that we hear a lot more consistent. So it will bring the quiet parts up a little bit while stopping the loud bits from getting too loud. Um, but you will hear, um, you'll still hear the difference between it and the intonation of the voice and things. Um, 
So I know that's a terrible, terrible description of it. And anybody who knows what they're doing is probably sitting thinking, who is this guy and what is he saying? <laughs> but let me show you what, what I mean. Um, thanks. For so here's the original. Uh, hi. hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. So... I have lots of dynamic range in there. You can see, you know, the high is very loud and then it comes down and then it goes up. Um, this is not going to change. You're not going to see that change in the waveform. But I'm going to I'm going to want to capture any of the really, really high bits and just squeeze the, the dynamic range of them a little bit. And we do that by setting a threshold, which is here. So any, any noise above a certain threshold will be squished, will be compressed. And we're going to do it, I always do it at a ratio of about two to one for vocal work. Um, and you'll see what I mean if I just can just continue to play this. Hi and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All if I bring podcast. the threshold Hi, down. Hi and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcast. Hi and welcome you to the here, Podcasters Podcast. This, this section here, this meter here is showing us how much the volume is being compressed, how much the squish is, to make sure that the loud bits don't appear too loud and the quiet bits retain their volume. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcasting. Hi, and well... Now, if I do it to the extreme, you'll, you'll get to hear a bit more of what it is. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcasting. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcasting. So the only loud bits we get now are the are the really poppy bits, um, because I've I've done it to the extreme sort of thing. But if I take it back to where we are, or hi and be. welcome to the podcasters podcast, all about podcast. Hi and welcome to the podcasters podcast, all about podcast. Hi. Now, I don't know how well this is going to come across, but if I take that off, you should hear a little bit more of the, the difference between the, the, the sound. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. And I'll put it back podcast. on for this time. All about podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Podcasters Podcast. All about podcast. Hi, and welcome to the podcast. Yeah, I don't know how well you're hearing that, but but as a visual cue, you should be seeing that whenever the... the um, the audio is peaking, it's being reduced in, in dynamic range, which means that the overall listening volume to it is remaining far more consistent. Uh, now, this is, this is absolutely common practice in, in broadcast. Most radio things that you listen to have been compressed you know on the way out to the to to the broadcast basically uh, which is why the radio djs always sound like they're talking at exactly the same level so it doesn't matter who's in what guest is you're hearing everything at the same level because they don't want to be sitting turning faders up and down depending on if you're talking quietly or loudly um so that that's a key aspect of leveling out um, and making the sound a little bit more crisp. Um, Ewan, I've probably done a terrible job at trying to explain that to you. Um, and and if if you would like more of it, I, I'm very would you know? I, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I would welcome anybody to get in touch for a chat about anything. Um, let me uh, bring you up quickly because I know we're we're, we're kind of running out of time. Um, that. That essentially is, is is how I go about making a podcast. So introduction with some music, do the edits to make sure the sounds are right, balance them out, make a template out of it with a front and end, and then every week or every episode, all you're needing to do is edit the content and put it in the middle. Um, the, the anchor will simply take that file that you've created from here, upload it, you add your artwork and your show notes, and suddenly the world can hear your podcast. Um, so, uh, I don't think there's an awful lot else for me to, to do on this right now, Moni. I don't know. Do you want to spend another 10 minutes having a general chat about anything? Or uh, I can show you some of the, the film work stuff? Or, or are we kind of short for time? Um, well, I have a couple of questions, um, yeah. if you don't mind, just on the, like, for the next couple of minutes. Um, so sometimes like when you listen to podcasts, um, you hear the host reading, you know, an ad, what sounds like an ad effectively. So is yeah. that a way to sort of monetize your podcast or, um, yeah. right. So yeah. basically yeah. like a commercial. 
yeah, the, so so there there are a few ways of monetizing your podcast now. Um, so one of them is to gain sponsorship, where essentially you're going to read out an advert for someone. Um, you know, but but that doesn't have to be you know a great big um, you know sort of hey now use Daz whiter than white. You know, it's a, find something that that connects with what you're doing with your podcast. Um, and it's it's quite natural actually to have something like. Um, Hi, guy. Just wanted to let you know that this week's podcast or this episode of the podcast um, is brought to you in association with Red Bull. Now, we all know Red Bull, but did you know that, uh, uh, you know, and, and making it more into a conversational editorial advertisement rather than having something smacked into the middle of your podcast. Um, so that's that's a great way of monetizing it. Another way of monetizing it now, which never used to be available, is that most of the podcast hosting apps like Anchor and things will allow you to have um, a separate stream for your podcast that is for subscription only. So you'll have people that listen to the regular version of your podcast, but you could make an extended version or, or a bit with more information or whatever in it, or even a bit that doesn't have adverts in it, so that people who pay your subscription, whatever it is, a pound or whatever, they get the special edition um so that's another way to to monetize it so yeah it, it used to be that very difficult to monetize it without slapping a great big horrific advert in the middle but um far better now to be able to do that so oh totally thank you and also um video because sometimes on youtube you can have podcasts and so how like would you is that something that you'd recommend or um and and if you do that you still have to record the sound separately so that you're able to send to sort of so there are there are there are two um two things out on the market at the moment that will help you do that one of them is zencaster.com um and the other one is uh, riverside.fm um, and those are both websites where you can uh, record video and audio or just record the audio and and watch yourselves in video um or or just record the video um so if you want to make video podcasts, use one of them because um, the audio quality and the video quality, for that matter, are so much better than you just recording a Zoom meeting, for example, because it will give you separate streams of audio and video for each of your guests. And you can then edit that into whatever you like. Um, the only downside of making your podcast as a video is the fact that audio is much easier to edit and manipulate without the listener knowing. Whereas the more edits you have to do in a video, um, you the more you notice, you know, a, a jump shot or um, you know something that that, that flickers a bit. Um, so it's, I mean, it's quite acceptable. Everybody knows that that you, you can't sit and do you know a forty minute interview with someone without necessarily being able to edit it a little bit, um, you know. But uh, yeah, it does become a lot more obvious on you. However, um, as we all know, anything you put on YouTube lives there forever. So if you, you know, and it's a good place to, to catch a following. So, you know, if you do want to do your stuff as a video, by all means, do that and stick it on YouTube because it's it, it's almost a different clientele than podcasts, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I know there is a lot of crossover, especially in, in different subjects, but you might find people who will find your podcast on YouTube who would never have normally found it on a podcast hosting site. Um, so by all means, yeah, th there are advantages to it. Wonderful. Well, I think um, for me, that was it. Um, guys, any questions? Speak now or forever hold your truth, <laughs> your peace. <laughs> um, well, Kerr, thank you so, so much. Um, that was uh, yep. very practical and um, very clear session i thought no you're very welcome um if anybody wants to to give me a shout about anything you know if, if there's things that we haven't covered or if you want to get started on something and, and and you you just want to talk it over or whatever um best way to do it is just to go through the website audiooutsource.co.uk um there's a contact form on there if that's all you want to do uh or you can drop me an email or something um care at audiooutsource.co.uk be quite happy to to shoot the breeze with anyone about anything audio um i've done a fair amount of film work for audio in fact that's how fred and i first met um oh. we're working on his films um because uh, I, I did a lot of uh 
field recording. Um, you know, so I would I'd be there with my with my big boomstick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've done a lot of that. I write a lot of music for music libraries and films and things. Oh, wow. um, so yeah. And anything that comes up, if you want to have a chat about something, fire me a message and uh, and we'll get together sometime. Amazing, Kara. Thank you so, so much um, for your time and for this thank conversation. You. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll be in touch or um, yeah. chatting with the students. Okay. Thank you so much. Have Great a stuff. Day. You're welcome. And we'll speak soon. All right. Thank you. Good Bye. to meet you all. Cheers. Bye.